Now, if you're on any of the community groups uh, which are running on Facebook at uh, other places, you may have heard people talking about Lent bags. What it, maybe you're thinking, what is a Lent bag? Well, some churches have decided to put together a little goodie bag to hand out to either church families who are in, in constant contact with the church or families just in their community that they may have been in contact through children's clubs in the past or by getting in touch with a school and asking for um, for them to send out details and people can get in touch to request a Lent bag. And you could start off this, uh, the season of Lent with a pancake event where depending on the communities you're reaching out, you could put one of those little plastic bottles already filled with pancake mix in the bag, um, or you could simply put in a recipe for making pancakes. You could have a pancake flipping party over Zoom, um, a decorator pancake event, but with the intention that you are starting off a Lent with this idea of engaging with the families to point them to Jesus. So in that bag, as well as some information about your church and what you're doing, and maybe some pancake leaflets, uh, recipes, etc., cetera, um, you could put some activity books. Um, or if they are going to your families, your church families, you could put in some um, devotional stuff. So, what we're suggesting for um, families who are linked to your church, who are, are likely to do some kind of devotions, we're looking at um, on the left of your screen, something called devotional dippers. So they come in in a cardboard pot and inside there are 40 sticks, so perfect for Lent. Um, and on each of them, there is um, a verse from the Bible, some questions, some activities that you can be doing. Um, but they're great for families to do over the dinner table um, or in a morning or, or just before bed. And there are three different types of devotional dippers. You can get a set that are all about prayer, a set which is about God, which is the names and the attributes of God, or a set of key Bible words. Now, they're normally $5.99 for a single pack, but you can mix and match uh, any three for uh, the price drops to $3.33. Um, or you could buy the whole, you know, the whole of your kids' church or Sunday school a set each uh, for that low price of three thirty three. So that would be a perfect gift to put in your Lent bag if it's going out to church families. Um, the second one is um, a daily Bible study that uh, we released last year. It's called Dig Into Matthew. So it's 40 studies again, going through the book of Matthew, um, greatly illustrated, designed ideally for those kind of very um, early, early teens or even late primary school kids. And it's a really great way to get them into Bible study. If they don't already do a daily Bible study, it would be a great opportunity to encourage them to do that. And then finally, for our church families, we are suggesting a book called A Taste of Asia. So this came out last year in conjunction with OMF. So it looks at how families can be really getting the heart of mission to their children. And there are 21 devotionals, so it's not something you would have to do every day. Um, I don't know about other families, but I've got three children. And sometimes things that are done every day can sometimes be a little bit overwhelming. So having the flexibility to miss a day is, is quite nice sometimes. So as these are a little bit more um, involved and they've got a little bit more to read, then, you know, 21 is quite, quite manageable for, for that. So moving on to things that we might suggest for these would still work for your church families, but certainly if you're wanting to reach out into community, you're not really sure where people stand in terms of what they know about Jesus and what they feel. We have some Easter activity books, which the children can do on their own and, you know, have explanations alongside them. The one at the far left of the screen is called Easter Activities. This is one we produce ourselves and it's currently on offer for $1.99. Um, it's kind of a juniors age range. So if you've got juniors that you want to reach out to, that's great. It's also on offer if you buy 10, then the price drops to 99 pence. So it's a really affordable way of getting uh, something into the pack. Moving along, we've then got one called Who Will Be King, another kind of juniors activity book. This one ties in with a tract as well. So it could be that you use these together. 
The Who Will Be King activity book is half price, it's $1.99. And the track that goes with it, depending on the numbers that you buy, um, could be as little as 40 pence. So the Who Will Be King, if you've ever seen the track Two Ways to Live, which goes through the two different um, worldviews, um, it kind of mirrors that and there's nice illustrations and you can get a sample of that on our website if you're interested. Um, there's also a sample of the Easter activities book. The third one along, the Easter colouring and activity book, this is kind of for your infants. So this is aimed at ages two to seven. It's got colouring, it's got some kind of like uh, dot to dot and mazes, etc. But again, always pointing to Jesus. Um, it's focused on the, the true Easter story. And so it's, it's a great way of engaging and getting involved. At the far right of the screen, this is called Easter for Kids. It's actually um, an adult planning guide. So it's an Easter ministry kit for um, maybe for your church youth uh, leader or for your minister or pastor. It's a great resource. It's jam packed ram jammed full i think it's probably the best way of saying um lots of different ideas word searches puzzles it even comes with a cd rom that's got um downloadable and printable resources on it and some music so if you're really struggling for um stuff but you don't think you want to put together um an activity kit with all of these things in um or maybe you don't think you've got the the resources to pay for some of these things this is reduced at the moment to just $4.99. Um, it should be $12.99. $4.99, you can get yourself this photocopy resource. Um, it's got the CD-ROM and it will really set you up. You can just print off as many or as few as you need uh, for what you need to do. So that's a, a great offer there. So we're going to talk through some of the ideas that we have for kind of getting um, children and families engaged throughout the period of Lent and then in the run-up to Easter. So this is actually my front window from last Easter, it doesn't currently look like this, um, but I for one have really taken to this decorating your window. I think, you know, during lockdown, lots of people, Christians and non-Christians, have thought it's a great way to reach out when you can't see people necessarily. When you walk in on your daily exercise, you can see people's windows and it can tell you a lot about them. So I had this in my window last Easter. So on the left, I had Jesus died. And then on Easter Sunday, I then upgraded it to Jesus is risen. And, um, and I left it on for, for a couple of weeks um, after Easter as well. I did one at Christmas as well. Um, that only came down this weekend, actually. My husband was despairing because he was wondering when it was going to stay up until. But... We also ran a, a decorated window competition through our church. So we engaged with both our church families and we shared it on our social media that anybody could take part to decorate their window. They got a goodie bag if they took part and then we chose a winner who got a, another prize. So it's a great way of trying to engage with your communities and through doing it, other people will kind of be able to see this uh, Easter story demonstrated through the windows. So it's really a, a great way to, uh, to engage with your community. The next suggestion that we have is um, something that some people do in the run up to Christmas, um, a sheep trail. Um, so linked into the idea of the shepherds and the sheep, but we think this would be great for the uh, Lenten and Easter period to do a lost sheep trail. Now I've put these little pictures of these little knitted sheep now, you don't have to have um, all fantastic knitters in your church to, to take part in this. Those specific ones um, are super easy. They're just squares, knitted squares that are then folded, put a little felt head on, um, and then they can be dotted around your community and people can be on the lookout for them. You can make it into a, a kind of like social media thing where people take a picture and share it on your page. And um, I'll, I'll talk briefly about... Uh, in a moment about how you can be doing these things so that there is that kind of ongoing interaction. But to go with this, we have a book called The Lost Sheep. It tells the parable of the lost sheep um, and it's got a very clear gospel explanation at the end as well. So as with all the resources that we're gonna be sharing, we think it's key that Jesus is mentioned and talked about and the gospel is clear through uh, the resources that we hand out. So the Lost Sheep books are 3 99 normally, but if you buy, let me just check, you can get 25 for just two pounds each. 
So the price drops after 25 to just two pounds each. So you can then buy more if, if you need to. So these would be great for anyone who took part in the trail. You can give them the book and give the gospel. So the next idea that we have, um, a lot of churches did Zoom parties for Halloween and for Christmas and gave out goodie bags. Um, definitely with uh, church youth groups that can't be running, you might already be doing this. There is a great uh, thought that there's, I'll, I'll find a link, I can't, find, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but there's a guy who's creating an Easter escape room um, and he will be putting that on his website as I say, I'll share the link in the email I sent after. But if you've got a youth group who you think will be interested in doing this, you can um, sign up for that and then take part in it. Drop a goodie bag around before or after for taking part. And it's just a really nice way of being able to engage with the youth, maybe in a way that you haven't been able to. And it's, it's great for them to be spending some time just having a little bit of fun together. But again, his resources um, are about the Easter story. So it is an Easter based escape room and it will tell the story of Easter. The next one that we're going to suggest is school assemblies. Now in the Christmas uh, one of these, I did suggest that maybe people could zoom into the schools and do a zoom assembly. Um, my experience of this is that the schools haven't got particularly great Wi-Fi. So um, the school that my children go to or one of my children goes to, they struggle to even do their own assembly between the classrooms that are in school because their Internet is so patchy. Um, so I've suggested not just trying to do a Zoom assembly, but also maybe you could pre-record an assembly and um, upload it onto YouTube um, as an unlisted or, or a, a fully uh, available one, if, you, if you're happy with that, and then share that link with the school so that they can view it in advance, see what you're going to be talking about, then they can share it in their classrooms as and when they are going to need it. It can tie in with their um, RE uh, syllabus and it's just a great way of engaging you personally you are their local person who they maybe see out and about and the children will see out and about so it's a great link to be able to be creating with the school and I know that the teachers would really appreciate any kind of content that they're not having to create themselves at this time as they are very very overwhelmed now next to that there is a, a picture of a gift so at Christmas we suggested perhaps you could give out a gift to all the children in school but again, depending on what happens with uh, schooling at the moment, that might not be something that's that's possible. But you could absolutely buy a Christian book to donate to that school for their library. If you feel you've got a slightly bigger budget, you could donate one to each class so that the class could have uh, a book in their class. Um, or if you do feel like you would like to, you could donate a book to every child in the school and then the school could um, distribute those on your behalf. Um, in the run up to Easter. Certainly, if you've got a CV school or another faith school, um, a lot of those would be absolutely thrilled if you were willing to donate those books. Um, and as I said, a lot of it will tie in with their RE syllabus as well. So they would be very grateful for that. Now, another great idea, which is one that I'm hoping that my own church are going to be able to run with. Uh, my husband's one of the pastors, so I do have a slight influence though over that as well, is that um, doing a, a trail, an Easter trail. Now, one of the things that I really want to um, highlight is QR codes. If you're not, if you don't really know what QR codes are, or you've been a little bit like skeptical about QR codes, all it is, is an image that um, can be then translated into a variety of things. It could be a website, it could be text, it could be all sorts of different things. So basically it's a scannable image that people can just go straight to what you want them to go to. So if you have a QR code reader on your phone, which most people do, either if you've got an iPhone, just the camera does it, or if you've got another kind of smartphone, uh, you can just download a free QR code app if you were to scan this uh, QR code that's currently on your screen, which you can if you want to, it will take you to a video that I have prepared, which just says, basically, well done, you got to this point in the trail, and uh, here's your next clue on the Easter trail. It's a really fun way of incorporating um, technology that children and families are used to with, um, with the trail that you're doing. 
It also means it takes less space on the poster or, or the design work that you're doing. And certainly if you're posting these around your local area, people might be interested and think, oh, what is that? What is that QR code all about? And so you can really link it together with what you're doing. Now you can get QR codes really easily. There's lots of free websites. The one I've put up there is just called QR Code Monkey. It's free. Um, it's, you know, it's a really nice piece of software. So if you're going to do a trail, you could have pre-recorded videos of the clues. You could have pre-recorded videos of people acting out parts of the Easter story. You could have, well, the, the world's your oyster. You can call it whatever you want to. It's really, really useful. The next thing that I want to uh, tell you about for QR codes is that you can have on your QR code just a clue or an answer. It doesn't have to link to any website whatsoever. So if, if you scan, again, the one that I've created here in, it will give you a phrase. So the key for this is if you put these up around your local area or you, you know, you've, you've got them as part of a treasure hunt or a scavenger hunt, people can scan them to get the answers or the questions for the next part of the trail. It does cut down on people maybe cheating because you have to you have to physically scan it to, to get the clue. Um, and on this one, I've shown I've put our logo in the middle of it. So the QR code monkey is quite um, advanced in the way it creates QR codes. So you could put your own church logo in the middle of your QR code, which, again, if you're just putting these up around your area, creates interest and buzz and it, it really engages with people. The next QR code that I'm going to um, suggest. So this one, again, it's a real QR code that I've created. This links to an interactive Google map. So I created a Google map um, called Beacon Easter Trail. There's only three things on it at the moment. But within that, if you were to scan it, there are the points on the trail that we want you to go to. And there is a picture and some information for each of those points. So you can create this interactive map of your Easter Trail um, again, it can have pictures or quizzes or um, clues. It can be whatever you want it to be. But again, it's a really fun way of engaging with those people on your trail. And we did at Christmas, we did a Christmas trail, which led to people's windows and it spelled out a word. Um, but it was, you either had just the, the map as a kind of printed map um, or, or just viewing it on your iPhone. This makes it much more interactive. And it means that, you know, they can follow it literally on the GPS on their phone. It just makes it a little bit more high tech, free to do on Google Maps. And it's very straightforward. If you're struggling, you don't know how to create one, please just message me and I'll, I'll be able to give you information about that. So why are we doing all this? What is the point? Well, we want to be able to give people um, information. We want to be able to either invite them to our church services. We want to give them books. We want to give them the gospel. And, you know, that is the key thing for what we're doing. So I'm going to invite um, one of our guests, Rachel Riddler. Um, she is, let me just read this so I get it right. She is the youth, children's and families worker at her church and also a centenary project worker. Um, so Rachel, how have you found that people have changed in how they are um, interacting with the church as families? Um, yeah, it's been really different. Um, I'm, um, I just before, before I answer your question, I just want to say that as um, we have been doing the Taste of Asia and the Devotional Dippers as our family church thing every morning for the last few months, so it is really is a great resource. I just want to give that a shout out. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they love the Taste of Asia; it's a fantastic book. So definitely get a copy of that. Um, yeah, we've we've changed from doing everything in person to everything is online. Um, obviously, a lot like a lot of churches, and obviously last Easter we missed out on everything because it took us quite a while to get caught up. So we're really excited about being able to do some stuff for Easter this year. Um, what I've found um, as a youth children and families worker is that by linking all of the parts of what we're doing, so our schools work with our families work with our regular congregation that, that has the biggest impact actually drawing all those things in together so one of the things that we're looking at doing as a church this year and um, a bit like some people do with poppies is making like a net of flowers which is going to go over our church and kind of around our church 
but we're going to get our congregation members, our school members, our messy church people to all make flowers, which will go on this net. Um, and that is going to be something that draws people to church. And it might be something that we can then have the details of our services and things up um, at the same time um, so they can see that. And we might have things that we're going to give away. Um, the other thing that, that has gone really well for us, um, and it was over the summer, but I think we're going to do an Easter version, um, is a chalk prayer path around our church. And we did that with kind of um, pandemic themed things this year. But actually, I think having kind of the Holy Week journey in chalk around our church and it's that they can add. So maybe we'll have the Palm Sunday bit and they can draw a leaf on the floor um, and maybe we'll have like the stone rolled away and they can draw a stone and add to that picture. Um, but we, we have found as well that getting people out of their houses and actually interacting and engaging with the church physically, getting them to come to the building to do something, whether that's to pick up a prize or to um, take part in something or to see something that they've had a part of, really is really kind of capturing the imagination of families because as much as we love Zoom and we love online services and we love that, actually we're just sick of being in our own homes, aren't we? And we just, we really want to, out so everything we tried to do we did a sheep trail for Christmas with the knitted sheep as well um but unfortunately a lot of them are now captive inside shop windows because all the shops are <laughs> closed um but I did an assembly at the school with all the sheep around me to kind of build that buzz and um we could see people out in around in the community people want to be out having things that make their walks their daily walks interesting um, so the trails, fantastic idea, Bethan, like all of those different ideas. Um, one thing to add, and I think I did mention it to you, is to also, you can also use the What Three Words app, um, which is a fantastic way of navigating people that's not just using maps or paper instructions, but you use kind of three words to define a particular area on a map. So that's another idea for you. Is that, does that answer some questions? <laughs> It does, Rachel, thank you. Um, I know from the, uh, I attended a, a webinar on Wednesday, Faith in Kids, and um, there is still a lot of nervousness with people about, um, you know, meeting up with other people in groups, and a lot of churches were quite nervous about putting on events where there was going to be a lot of people around. So certainly my preference but obviously everyone is entitled to to do something themselves is to have something spaced out not all kind of in one space um and over a, a period of time rather than all at once um but I, I think just echoing what rachel said people do want to get out they do want to see people as long as it's in a safe and kind of COVID secure way and um i heard of an idea of doing a kind of live nativity not 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 nativity a live easter i've got nativity on the brain um where you would have people acting out in bubbles obviously um parts of the easter story uh, working maybe through holy week uh, etc and just having that kind of person that you can stand at a distance and and watch kind of acting out a scene really brings it to life number one but also it's just something different it's not on a screen it's not um something that you know you're just reading a piece of paper it really does uh, reach out to people and they want to get out of their houses they do want to go for a walk and do something so any ideas that tie all those things together um really should have the most impact and i like what rachel said about tying together um, your different work with the schools and, and with your church families and then the community as a whole uh, we found that sharing stuff on social media if we we spoke to our church members and said look we're doing this not for you we are like we're doing it for you but this is to reach out please share the posts please invite your friends you know it's great that you want to do it but really we want you to invite other people as well so engage with your church family and say to them look please invite people even if you can't do it together because of restrictions because we don't know what what it will be like when when it gets to that time i think preparing for the worst case scenario is the best option and then if miraculously we can we can you know have some um smaller groups working together we can then change it at the last minute then that's far easier than going the other way so 
the main resources that we've got for giving away for children, I think we're going to see on the screen now. We have packs of books that we put together. These are our top five Easter books and we put them into packs of 50. Um, so you can get 50 for 50 pounds. So really affordable. Um, all of them share the gospel message. Again, that's key to what we do. And all of them are in child friendly language. Um, there's a range of sizes. So, you know, if, you, if you're looking for something that you want to fit through a letterbox, the, the middle three fit through letterboxes. <laughs> the outside two don't fit through a letterbox. So that's just for, you know, I've had people say that to me in the past, like I bought these and they won't fit through anyone's letterbox. So um, the different sizes, uh, the middle one, the story of Easter is much more of a kind of like toddler or infant's uh, book. The Empty Tomb, um, which is on the far right, is a great one for slightly older children. They're all really nicely written and illustrated and great way of giving out at a really low cost, um, the, the gospel to these families. We also have put together this giveaway box. And so this box has got 80 different items. So 10 adults books, 10 kids books, and 60 tracks for just 25 pounds. So if you're an individual who is thinking, well, I don't wanna buy 50 of you know, those books, because I can't, I can't afford that. And I don't have 50 people to give to. This will give you a really nice variety of the things that we'll talk about today so that you can be giving to your family, to your neighbours, to your, you know, postman or your DPD guy who we actually bought a present for our DPD delivery guy this year because we've seen him more than we've seen our own family. And um, so we gave him a, a we gave him a CD and a, and a box of uh, biscuits. And so there's lots of ways that we can be reaching out to people this Easter with the gospel. So I'm gonna hand over to Tim now and Tim's briefly gonna talk about um, how you can use that giveaway box. Thanks, Bethan. Uh, just to remind everybody about the Slido, if you want to ask questions, uh, we realize that there is so much you can talk about spaces, uh, and we're going to pay so please do go to slido uh, and use the room code 74434 at 74434 and you can ask your questions and upvote other people's questions and we'll get to those uh, towards the end so yeah let's say you buy the easter giveaway box or you put together one of your your own because you've bought some other resources uh for, from the website uh, you could do something like this this is uh, roger's little stand and uh, maybe he'll mention it when we uh, ask him some questions later but you can you can quite easily do this um pop a little box at the end of your garden uh, next to your next to your gate um, with a little sign saying free pl please take one um, there's a phone booth um, right next to the bottom of the stairs where I live um, and I'm wondering is there just a little thing that I could pop in there that has a couple of tracks and a couple of life magazines and a few other things that might just catch someone's eye and they can pick it up and go away and read it and you never know what impact that might have uh, for the gospel. Um, so. You know, we've got all sorts of resources, adults resources. Um, one is evangelistic tracts. Um, I, I, the standard price is six, uh, six pence uh, each if you're buying a hundred, which means that you get a whole range of things. Um, there's a brand new one coming out this year. Roger's written it for us, uh, Real Hope. Um, but there's loads of other uh, tracts there that may just work in your situation uh, and many of them aim towards kind of easter time as it as it comes up um, I don't want to forget about Lent though, and Lent particularly for, for adults uh, is a great time to engage your church family and um, the devotions on the right hand side there um, are all about 50 days worth um, so there's uh, uh, some of the data devotions, so uh, it's not a, a, a heaping pile of condemnation if maybe you don't get to it every day, um, but they're about the right length for length, Lent even, and they're really affordable if you buy them in quantity. Um, the two on the left, um, Generosity Project is a really fantastic study. It's a study book that ties into online videos that you can get for free, uh, and it 
comes in six studies. So it would be a really manageable um, target if you wanted to engage your folks kind of once a week uh, during Lent. Uh, and Overcoming Walls to Witnessing is a brand new little book focusing on outreach, um, which would be, again, a fantastic study uh, to do during the Lent period uh, if you were looking for something slightly different. Uh, there's also some other Lent resources. Um, Hope in a Time of Suffering, it's quite like around it devotions but it's much shorter it's only 22 uh, sessions so might be more manageable uh, to do together as a church because you'll undoubtedly miss a day or two uh, and some of the readings in it are quite long but uh, Jeremy Marshall's story is fantastic and he is so uh, helpful in how he uh, puts across the hope that we have uh, in times of suffering and that could even be used among folks who maybe they're interested enough to read uh, a little bit of the bible interested enough to do a little bit of uh, a, a kind of daily study but but maybe aren't quite Christians yet uh, or maybe aren't quite sure where they're at with with uh, Jesus yet uh, he's really helpfully written that and and quite carefully written it so that it can be used by uh, kind of non-Christians as well as Christians uh, and on the right there um, you'll see reflections for Easter which is a really uh, beautiful uh, kind of almost Lent calendar. Uh, it's designed uh, that you have two days a week uh, for the first 40 days uh, and then during the last week of Easter there's a card per day and on the back of it um, there's a, a little meditation and then there's a book uh, to go alongside it uh, to give you reflections for during that time. It's a really beautiful thing. It would be uh, lovely to use during during Lent. Um, and then there's all the other things that you can do as you reach out. Um, there are postcards. These are great to pop into little giveaway bags um, to handwrite to your neighbours. And uh, again, these um, if you're buying uh, a, a few packs of, of these postcards, um, they are incredibly cheap. I think about a pound per pack or less than a pound per pack um, and would be very easy to handwrite. Uh, a note to everybody on your row uh, and just pop a little postcard in, maybe with some of the other resources uh, that we're going to cover as well. If you wanted something slightly more substantial, the Easter card would work better. Uh, we're, we're creating a, a range of these Easter cards um, and uh, we don't have all of the uh, images yet, so forgive us for only having a couple of samples there, but uh, these would be lovely things to, to write uh, and pop into to a gift bag with something else. Um, we had great success uh, at Christmas uh, creating a CD that went out uh, and we have Phil Moore uh, with us uh, to talk a little uh, about that. Phil, uh, you are Director of Ministry at Cornerstone, am I right in that title? That's right. It sounds rather grand. <laughs> I lead the uh, Youth and the Music Ministry at Cornerstone Church in Nottingham. And uh, yeah, we were, we were hugely encouraged by the uh, Christmas CD project. Uh, we produced this Christmas carol service on a CD. We partnered with 10 of those to put those out. There were two short talks by Roger Carswell. Uh, and we had we had fairly modest expectations about how the CD was going to do. And we were just blown away by how many of these went out across the country. And I've just had so many stories come back from people telling me uh, how they shared them, uh, sharing them with care homes, uh, with their local schools. Uh, uh, even prisons around the UK, all the prisons in the UK use the songs as part of their Easter, or sorry, their Christmas uh, Day uh, service. And uh, we were delighted with that. And, and other friends saying that they had a pile of them beside the door, like Beth had mentioned earlier on, given, given a gift to the DPD driver or the, the Tesco man or the Amazon delivery driver, the, the window cleaner, whoever comes to the door who were seeing these people and we have an opportunity to uh, connect with. Um, one lady uh, who actually works for the company who, which is supplying the Oxford vaccine for COVID, um, she bought a bunch of them and gave them away to all of her colleagues who, uh, to, to encourage them in the work that they were doing, vital work for us in, in the country uh, at the minute. 
And yeah, countless stories coming in about how people used a CD and maybe it may be a slightly different way that they would use a book to give away to people to put it in their car. Uh, you know, we, we most of us still have CD players in our cars. You stick it in the CD and you don't just listen to it once. You might listen to it 10 times or or 20 times. My three year old nephew can recite Roger's talk pretty much word for word, uh, having listened to it about 30 times over Christmas. And uh, you really do get get it into people's heads. Uh, some people ask us, why, why are you producing a CD? You know, aren't CDs on their way out? You know, all of that. And uh, well, firstly, we were blown away by the number of CDs which were, were bought and, and went out. Uh, and secondly, I think the CD kind of connected to what Bethan was saying earlier on about the QR code evangelism thing. We stuck a QR code on the back. So the CD was a, a kind of nice little gift that you gave away which then acted as a bit of a flyer to videos and other online resources, which we, we made in, in collaboration for that. Um, uh, yeah, so, so why do we do an Easter CD? Well, we're, we're teaming up with, uh, with uh, Glenn Scrivener, who uh, is, is a great evangelist as well. And he, he's going to, uh, to record a couple of uh, short talks, which will be on there as well. Uh, and uh, so why, why do we produce Easter music? Well, I think music kind of connects with people. It, it does stir our hearts. It grabs our attention. It, it reaches people. As I said, that there might be people who you give a CD to who may not feel comfortable reading a book, but they might stick the CD on the CD player. So, so we recorded a bunch of songs, some traditional kind of Easter hymns, kind of reimagined uh, in a contemporary style and uh, also some new songs on there as well which have been written specifically with this kind of theme of of hope uh in mind thinking about how can we encourage people with the hope that we have um in, in the risen christ and uh, we're super thankful to the fiec to music ministry uk and 10 of those for kind of backing this project so that we could um, get these easter cds made and available and out for people to use in their evangelism this easter mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Phil. Uh, really helpful to have you here. And uh, I'm sure you can ask Phil some questions uh, afterwards if you wanted to know more about that. One thing that I would say in, in getting hold of those Easter CDs, um, you aren't really able, because of the time frame, to buy one or two, share it around your kind of leadership team, and then buy a, a bulk load. Um, the production is very tight to Easter, and so you you kind of need to buy your your whole lot that you want to give out at once, uh, nice and early, so that we can uh, get pre-orders in, so that we can tell the the production uh, for. Um, how many we need uh, to, to send them out to you um, and so please don't think that you'll be able to kind of get a couple of them uh, and, and have a listen uh, beforehand but we may have uh, some sample tracks for you um, beforehand uh, that you can listen on you on the internet through YouTube or something. Um, so yes, Easter CDs fantastic resource. Uh, if you wanted to maybe give people a couple of things together, uh, we're going to put a, put together a pack that has uh, a pack of uh, CDs, I think about 20 of them, um, a pack of car of tracks and a pack of uh, Easter cards all together so that you can, you know, slip a CD into the card, slip a tract in the middle and that way, you know, there's the personal touch from the card, there's the kind of Easter CD to grab folks' attention and to be the kind of nice gift. And there's also the tract in there so that if folk just glance through and maybe don't uh, have a CD player, um, but still read the, the tract, they're still going to hear the gospel and still going to get pointed towards uh, Jesus at Easter. If you're uh, looking for another resource to give away, there's the evangelistic magazines, um, Bethan's the editor, uh, and these are a fantastic resource. Um, they are so attractive, um, they are for the whole family, uh, and it's the sort of thing that uh, if you weren't in a COVID season uh, and you were in the dentist surgery and one of them was sitting there next to the copy of Vogue, you know, you never know where the gospel might go uh, with that. Uh, and these, uh, you can get them uh, plain from us at about 40 pence each if you're buying uh, kind of a larger quantity. But we also have a, a scheme whereby we can uh, get these distributed through Royal Mail um, for about 45 pence a magazine. Uh, that's including the cost of the magazine. 
it's a really cost effective way to reach thousands of people at a time and now that's generally quite a large project it tends to be kind of 5,000 people at least. Um, but please do get in touch if you want to do that and do that relatively soon um, because it takes a few weeks for us to make that happen. And if you wanted it to happen before Easter particularly, um, we would need to get that kind of uh, ready to go in the next kind of two or three weeks so that we could get your details printed on the back of them and get them uh, to Royal Mail in good time. Uh, there are so many more resources and um, there are Easter giveaway books uh, the new one for this year is Easter the Greatest Gift by uh, Paul Williams who is an absolutely phenomenal author and uh, you can get uh, all of these books on the screen here for as little as a pound each if you're buying uh, a bulk load. Um, these would be fantastic little gifts to give away uh, if you have Easter services that maybe you get visitors to or again to pass around uh, the local neighbourhood. Um, there are testimony, testimony books um, which are uh, excellent because if you buy a stack of these and perhaps don't get an opportunity to give them away at Easter, um, they don't go out of date in the same way as an Easter book, I suppose. Uh, and hearing other people's stories so often gets around people's uh, inhibitions uh, and uh, hearing where different people have, have found Jesus uh, is such a, an, an attractive and an effective way of communicating the gospel uh, for some folk. Um, you, there is also, of course, uh, giving away portions of scripture, which is a, an incredibly valuable thing to do. Um, there's gospels there that you can get from as little as 40 pence, uh, as well as New Testaments, full Bibles. Uh, and some of these giveaway editions are ridiculously uh, inexpensive. Uh, and so uh, you can give these away uh, kind of at grand scale for, for very little. Um, but whatever you do, um, please do uh, plan for some follow-up. Um, I, I think uh, one of the biggest failings that we have as, as evangelistically minded folks sometimes uh, is having a great spurt of energy at the beginning uh, and just failing to have that second step in place. Uh, and having uh, just a plan or a seed of a plan so that if anybody happens to ask, you can say, oh, yes, we're running a course in, in a couple of weeks um, would be um, just such a helpful thing to draw people on uh, with you uh, so that folks don't get lost after maybe hearing the gospel for the first time or maybe for the 10th time, having that little bit of interest and then suddenly they get lost in the in the busyness of life uh, and that would be uh, such a shame. Uh, Roger, uh, you've very patiently been waiting there in the wings uh, for me to hand over to you. Uh, please do uh, share your wisdom with us. You are an excellent evangelist uh, and please do share some of your ideas uh, of what could be done with some of these resources. Yes, well, it's great to be with you. I'm really treating Easter this year a bit like I'd treat Christmas any other year. Christmas gives a unique opportunity to give away books and, uh, uh, you know, cards and tracks, etc. So as we're in lockdown, I think there's never been a better Easter for distributing uh, gospel literature. Um, so um, I'm going to be in touch with each of my local care homes as I was at Christmas. I asked them for a list of all the Christian names of the residents. Uh, each of them supplied that and I, I wrote a postcard um, and uh, I got a Christmas tract. I put it in, uh, it put it in a, a Christmas, it, sorry, in an envelope and I just sent the whole bundle to the, to the care homes. They were all really delighted that I was willing to do that and as churches, that would be very, very easy to do. Um, as well, uh, at Christmas, you know, you tip various people, don't you? The postman, you talked about the DPD um, driver, our Morrison's delivery man, etc. You tip loads of people. You wouldn't necessarily tip, um, but uh, but because you can give a book away with a box of chocolates or something, well, I'm going to do that as well at Easter. So uh, we'll have a, 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 an Easter egg with a um, probably Paul Williams's book or maybe a tract, it just depends which, and we'll give it to as many people as we can. We still have uh, a proper milkman comes to our house, so they'll get one, etc. Trying to think creatively like that. Um, 
last Life magazine, I ordered 500 copies of, um, um, of, of the Life magazine. That covers my village and the next door village. This time, uh, because there was a special deal when we begged for a, a good discount, uh, we've ordered a, th a thousand. And you know, we're supposed to be going on a walk for an hour every day. So why not put something through a letterbox as we're going for a walk? So I've got a thousand to give away. Um, but that's very exciting. I just think Easter gives us this opportunity this year, particularly. I love the verse found in Ecclesiastes 11, 6. In the morning, sow your seed. And in the evening, do not withhold your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. Now, normally I order about 20 Easter cards uh, compared with a few hundred Christmas cards. But this year I'm going to get a whole load of Easter cards because, again, I just think it's a, an extra opportunity to um, to send greetings when people are delighted to receive any mail. And of course, in every Easter card, um, there will be that that. Um, well, I forgot the title of it, but that new Hope Tract, which is an Easter tract, but it's designed for the coronavirus period. Um, interesting, I heard, was it Bethan talking about the three words, or was it, I've forgotten who it was, the three words which are um, uh, a, a sort of address. Well, I've done a tract, it's not yet ready, called Three Words, and um, it's taking that idea of the new idea, of three words, giving us an address, address but the words, um, thank you, sorry, please. Three words that bring us to Christ. But I'm really just trying to think creatively. As many of you know, uh, each day I've been trying to write to one non-Christian. Um, again, just on a postcard, you, you can say a little or a lot on one postcard, put it with a tract and uh, put it in an envelope. So um, uh, my, um, my supermarket managers, my bank manager, my doctor, my uh, boots, my um, dentist, they'll all get um, an Easter card this year with a tract and say, hey, thanks for continuing to serve us well. Even the police station, not, in the, not a great lover of them, but anyway, even they get one. And certainly the ambulance station does. Um, so it's just thinking, how can we get out literature? Easter gives us another opportunity. We have a great one at Christmas. Easter gives us another one. Let's use it. And particularly this year, I feel that people will be very responsive to receiving literature. You might be interested to know that um, 10 of those each week send me a bundle of the responses that we get from the coronavirus tracks or other tracks. And it's really thrilling. It's hard to know quite what people are thinking, but people are writing in. They are asking for more information, which we're sending. Once in a while, I get a letter. I got a letter from a, a lady in Skegness. She, she'd got the Life magazine, um, and uh, she started going to church regularly as a result of getting the last Life magazine. And it's lovely when you get these, but to have bundles of these coupons where people are asking for more information and we're, as much as we can we try to link them up with a good bible believing church as well so it is encouraging work we're scattering seed in some ways i feel it's a bit like the old gideons you know they they they, they had their bibles in hotels they never knew what the impact was going to be mm -hmm. they gave out bibles in schools they never knew what the impact was going to be and in distributing gospel literature we may not know but nevertheless there are encouraging signs and who knows in eternity there might be many many other good stories that we'll hear thank you so much for that encouragement roger it's uh, so incredible to hear uh, of folks uh, responding to to the the literature that that goes out um even if we don't always see it. Uh, can we uh, answer a few of the questions? Thank you to everybody that's uh, popped one uh, through Slido. Um, we, um, I'll try and bundle these up as well as I can. Uh, forgive me if maybe I don't uh, get to yours, uh, but I don't want to keep us uh, too much uh, longer at all if that's uh, possible. Um, I noticed there's a couple of questions on, on resources for uh, teens. Um, uh, Nick, you probably say it best. Uh, there's often loads of good resources for adults and young children, but not much for 80, 8 to 18 year olds. Uh, can you recommend some good resources for these ages? Um, I would probably recommend uh, something like A Case for Easter uh, by Lee Strobel. I think that would be a, a key uh, resource to, to pass out to those of this age. Um, Bethan, uh, you mentioned, was it Dig Into Matthew uh, for kind of the older uh, 
area of that. Um, and, and there are a, a couple of other titles that would be good giveaway resources um, um, in this age range. Um, I'm just trying to think. Can I oh, come in? Roger, um, yeah. Can I come in? I think the Action Bible, which is the, the Bible yes. with those, you know, the sort of cartoon pictures, is great for sort of 10, 11, 12, 13 year olds. And boys and girls love it. And it sort of gives them the Bible story, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, and I believe there's a shortened excerpt of that. There certainly is for the Christmas story. I believe there's one for the Easter story as well. Uh, so that may be something, uh, the Action Bible itself is, is quite um, quite a, a, a lovely gift uh, to give away, but would be far too expensive to give away en masse. But uh, maybe if you wanted something shorter to give away. I just pop in, Tim. We've we a tract uh, for teens called The Big Picture. It's mm. uh, by a wonderful artist yeah. called Jason Ramasamy, and um, it's basically the full Bible picture in one illustration. And then on the back, it kind of explains all the different uh, parts of uh, the, the, the biblical timeline story. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a great one for teens. Uh, you can find those on our website. It's just called The Big Picture. Um, as well, if I may, um... I know that 10 of those is very burdened to try and get stuff out for this sort of 13, 14, 15 year olds. If any of you feel that your writers get in touch with Bethan or Lois and say, look, I've got this suggestion for this age group, they would look at what you're thinking about very seriously. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you. Um, uh, Bethan, um, someone, uh, Andy is asking, uh, will you be posting up this webinar uh, presentation so we can look at it, so that we can point others in our churches to look at it? Sorry. Yeah, so like we did with the last one, this has been recorded. So we will share the recording with the people who are in the meeting. So um, you will get a copy of that if you're in here. But we will also create a blog post about it with direct links to the specific resources that were mentioned so that you can just click straight through. So that will be going on over the weekend, we think. Um, but yeah, you'll get a link sent through. Anyone who signed up, even if they couldn't make it today, will we'll get those links and you can share that around as well. Thanks. Um, one for Phil. Uh, will the Easter CD be put up uh, as a Spotify playlist that we could link to, perhaps? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we did that with Christmas. We're, we're planning to put it on Spotify, iTunes, everywhere where you listen to music online. And, and also, uh, we'll, we'll have some videos available on YouTube as well, uh, both of the kind of lyric videos and also of Glenn's talks as well. And, and we'd love it if churches wanted to use those lyric videos for their online worship, they would have full permission to use those in their services as well. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much, Phil. Um, just one or two last ones then. Um, the Life Magazine minimums to get it posted, and um, please do get in touch. 5,000 is um, the kind of standard, but please do get in touch if um, maybe you think that you could manage kind of 4,500 or you're not sure kind of what the postal sectors around you are like. Um, uh, and I can kind of work that up properly for you uh, in the coming days. Uh, and then there's two last questions. One's about QR codes and one's about posters. Beth, and I think you're best placed to answer both of those. Um, so do we have A4 posters that we can pop up in front windows? And then do we need uh, permission to put QR codes uh, in public places? Um, so in terms of the posters, I know we did a selection of posters for Christmas. We haven't we haven't got any posters uh, for Easter at the moment. Um, but you know, A4 I would say is a little bit too small for a window. We did A3, and even from a distance, you know, it's it's not particularly impactful if you're far away you do have to get reasonably close so i'd say a minimum of, of a3 um, if there is an appetite for it we can always create uh, a poster that can be downloaded we wouldn't be selling them i think one of the issues that we had was sending them out in the post <laughs> because they were quite large um so we might be able to produce something that can be downloaded to tie in roger Yes, well, that the tract I've done called Christ, which the yellow one, I don't know if you can put it up, Christ died, Christ, three days later he rose. And in, in the past, you've shown it earlier, Tim, um, yeah. in the past, uh, people have used that, they've blown it up and uh, made it as a poster. 
Yeah, so that's definitely something we can organise. Um, in terms of putting the QR codes up around and about, um, as long as it's not a permanent feature, I think it's it's fine. I would say anything that you're doing, um, obviously be mindful of where you're putting stuff that it's not in the way and it's not um, you know going to cause any issue. Um, but normally these are kind of temporary. Um, I don't know the legalities of your local councils, so if, if you want to contact them, um, but certainly if you're going to use the Google Maps, then obviously that's fine. Um, and if you're just placing them there for a short period of time, that's fine. Or you can pop them in your congregation's windows, that's also another option, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, I just wanted to say as well, Roger mentioned about Christmas cards going into care homes after he said that at the last meeting that we had I was like oh I'd really love to do that but I don't feel that I physically have the time to do it so I um, got in touch with a lot of the people from our church and said look I think this is a great idea I contacted all the local care homes and we they were very willing to give over the first names of the people who lived there um, we, we wrote out about 150 um, Christmas cards. We popped a tract in, um, which is called Prayers You Might Wish to Pray. Um, and we gave those out to everybody in the care homes locally. We also put in a CD and a big box of chocolates for the staff, because obviously they've been uh, very busy this year, and a thank you card for the work that they've been doing. And that was wonderful. And I, we also sent the um, CDs in Christmas cards to all our friends and family. And we had mainly comments from non-Christians contacting us saying, thank you so much for the CD. It was really lovely. And um, thank you for that. And I honestly don't believe if I'd have sent a book, that would have had the same impact. So I do think the CDs were a really, really uh, great thing in, in that respect. So I think if that's the last of the questions, we're just going to finish off. Um, thank you so much for, for joining us uh, today. We do obviously appreciate the time that you've given up. Hopefully we've given you some ideas, maybe not all new, but maybe some different ones or, or just refreshed your memory about some things you might have been thinking of. As we said before, our key aim is to help you to take the gospel out into your community, to point to Jesus this Easter. It is great, obviously, to make friends with people and to um, have good relationships with those, but really, we, we long for them to know Jesus personally. And so in everything that we do, that's what we're aiming for. So as part of that, as a thank you for joining today's uh, webinar, you can download the free ebook of Intentional, which is a book by Paul Williams, who's written our um, Easter uh, book this year. And it it's all about how to kind of get over our fears about evangelism and making sure that we're pointing people to Jesus. So all you have to do is pop onto our website, um, find the ebook, not the physical book of this, and use the discount code intent. In the email that I'll send out with all the all the information, I'll put a direct link in and I'll remind you of this code just in case you forget. But um, it would be wonderful if, if everybody who attended the, the webinar had a copy of this book, read it, and was just really encouraged in uh, reaching out into their communities.